In 2015, Itaka Institute and its partners started a project in Nepal to show how with forest gardening, uh, carbon can be sequestered, ecosystems be uh, re-established, and farmer income and food security be procured. And in the following 20 minutes about, I would like to show you some of our experiences and further ideas how that can be scaled up uh, to a wider region. Um, the project started in the Ratanpur region at about 1200 meters altitude, uh, where as you can see here on this picture, uh, many of uh, ancient terraces lay barren by now um, and they are vulnerable to erosion and uh, soil degradation and uh, water problems arising. And uh, the main problem it comes that uh, mainly the men and uh, the young people leaving the villages uh, for better paid jobs in the city or in foreign countries um, as the production of, um, of stable food uh, does not procure the income for uh, new consumer uh, desires. And so well, when we came after the earthquake um, in 2015 uh, to the village, there was a, a new, new wave of uh, engagement arising, thinking that uh, with the uh, city life, lot, a lot of a uh, lot of life quality is is, is going um, going down. And uh, people came back to the villages uh, just for a short time, in fact, uh, but thinking about what could be done. And that was a starting point um, that, uh, that um, we, we were working on. So these are this type of paddy rice terraces uh, that now lay barren since several years. And you can you can already see that there's uh, some grasses uh, growing, but um, soil is it became very hard and uh, no much uh, organic matter in it. And the strong um, strong rainfalls during the rainy seasons, um, flowing away these uh, these dikes and, uh, and, and terraces. Uh, in the meantime, that uh, the men uh, left the cities, um, it's mainly the women and the lady farmers that um, still maintain um, their kitchen gardens um, with quite a lot of engagement and uh, produce food for, for children and for themselves, which is sufficient. So, in fact, they don't really need any more um, the production of the wider fields. The main objectives uh, of uh, this project is to control the erosion on these abandoned uh, fields, uh, especially also uh, to avoid uh, landslides, um, to retain more of um, the rainy season water uh, in the soil but also in, in the sources as uh, the prolongated uh, dry season um, that suffer um, the people that are still in the villages uh, with only um, one last uh, source uh, with very few um, water for the whole village. Um, Biodiversity preservation is, um, is definitely another objective and we want to increase soil organic matter, uh, sequester carbon and uh, in the end um, create uh, new income and uh, develop new products that create jobs, well-paid jobs um, in the village. So how, how could we uh, possibly achieve uh, this in this uh, rather uh, poor region uh, where in fact uh, nobody in the village would have the money to invest uh, into something. And this, the link of these objectives that um, we told here 
um, is in fact the tree um, that links uh, between uh, the atmospheric carbon pool and the terrestrial carbon pool. Um, so we want to um, plant uh, perennial crops, mainly uh, tree crops, and beside uh, the fruit, nuts and further trees. Um, we also want uh, to uh, to produce um, to produce biomaterials for new processed agro products uh, like uh, essential oils that we can make from cinnamon uh, or um, silk from mulberry or perfume and pharmaceuticals for example from Michaelia trumpaca trees. So this gives a, a mixture of different uh, trees which also increases biodiversity and uh, avoids uh, risks um, of failure of only one crop. So the question now is how can we transform uh, all these good ideas into a sustainable and um, multipliable system? And so this has to do that we have to uh, relate in fact, the local climate change that uh, all people um, remark since several years uh, in this um, in this climate change prone region uh, with changed rain patterns, especially, and link it to the global climate change. Um, because global climate change uh, needs the local solutions um, as well as uh, global action on a reduction of carbon um, dioxide emissions. But um, to achieve negative emissions, which means to extract CO2 from the atmosphere, um, we need biomass, and this biomass has to grow um, all over the world, and that means we have to include uh, local populations into this action. So, if we if we look um, to a tree, um, which is not uh, a special uh, biomass intensive production tree, but just um, um, a local adapted tree um, that also has uh, valuable crop production, like a cinnamon, for example. Uh, so this type of cinnamon tree, which does not grow very big and not for for, for very long uh, time period, so life expectancy is about 20-25 years. So on an average of the first 10 years, um, this tree would capture about 90 kilograms of CO2 uh, in one year. So this one tree captures about the amount of CO2 that a rather small car uh, would emit when driving 700 kilometers. So, so you see that at um, one side of the world uh, emissions um, are produced and it can be at any other place in the world uh, this CO2 can be taken up again biomass. So if we link this um, through paying of, um, of a carbon tax, for example, um, then we can pay for this ecosystem or carbon system service uh, and the, pay, the people uh, that produces the emissions pay for the uh, accumulation into biomass again. So we scale that uh, a bit up. Uh, we can calculate uh, on, on, the, um, on the databases that, that we established. Um, now we need about 850 of these uh, described mixed trees uh, to capture 11.5 tons of CO2 per year. Um, so this is about the amount of one person in Germany that emits uh, exactly this 11.5 ton. Uh, CO2 in one year with his lifestyle, uh, while, for example, in Nepal that would be the amount that 40 people um, emits. But um, 
we, we can link now this one person uh, to this 850 trees. So if this one person um, does not change his lifestyle and, uh, and emits for the moment this average amount, um, then at least uh, let uh, him pay this yearly amount of uh, one, about one euro per day that someone takes care of these emissions and um, makes uh, the carbon balance. So, but just to imagine uh, that that uh, will certainly not work for the whole world uh, without reductions of lifestyle and CO2 emissions is that for these 850 mixed trees um, we need uh, about 1.5 hectare um, while food production, average food production of uh, the world is done of about 0.2 hectares per person. So in fact to recover the CO2 emissions we need about uh, eight times the surface area as we need for food production. So this is now not a solution for the whole world, but it is, as we will show now, part of the solution and it helps to recreate these ecosystems that become more and more degraded. So when we start uh, to work with the people in the villages um, to make also understand um, how this global and local climate change is, is related, um, one, one first step and thing to do is um, that uh, we make, in fact, the carbon visible, the carbon cycle, in fact, demonstrating uh, where this carbon is. Because uh, when you see um, a field growing in green or, or a green tree, uh, you don't really uh, see that it contains 50% of carbon and th that this carbon comes from the atmosphere, um, as it's, it's not uh, black, it's green. So when uh, we can do this, we, we cut... Um, biomass, uh, like for example this um, in Nepal, uh, very abandoned herpatorium biomass, which is an invasive shrub and, um, that covers uh, especially these abandoned fields um, and covers also forests, that's why it's also called forest killer. So this biomass uh, can be cut and we uh, make biochar out of this green biomass using uh, flame curtain pyrolysis which is a um, very easy way uh, to produce biochar promoted uh, by the Itaka Institute for the last three years now. Um, this is a, a biochar a method that um, that is in the meantime established in about 80 countries in the world um, it can be done uh, like you can see here uh, in a hole in the ground um, or more sophisticated in, in stainless steel. But um, as we established uh, this technology in the village where, we have, where there is no investment money, um, the Kontiki um, kiln in the ground just works fine. So we can produce about 800 liters of biochar from these invasive shrubs, as you have seen, which takes about uh, two hours, uh, maybe a bit more. And as you can see here, uh, this is at the end of, of the, the pyrolysis, uh, you, you get really uh, about one cubic meter of, uh, of black char. That is the sense of, of the biomass that was paralyzed um, and that is the carbon that was taken up uh, from the atmosphere. And if we take like one ton of dry biomass, we can make about 200 kilogram uh, of um, biochar carbon out of it. 
as an equivalent of 1.1 ton of CO2. But if we would just let degrade the same biomass on soil, um, it would emit about 1.8 tons of CO2 uh, back to the atmosphere, and no carbon would be um, remaining in the system, while this biochar carbon is very stable, or bring it back to soil, it will stay there uh, for more than 100 years and probably even uh, much more. So, but uh, this biochar carbon that we produced, uh, not only to show that, um, that biomass contains this carbon, this biochar uh, is used uh, especially as a carrier for organic fertilizer um, because it has a, a huge porous structure and can uptake up to seven times its own weight in liquids. And so we charge this biochar with uh, cow urine, as you can see here. Though there are pits uh, established at the, the cow sheds uh, where the urine flows directly uh, into this biochar and so we can turn local waste streams into new opportunities because this uh, urine biochar is now a ready-made organic fertilizer. Um, looks like here is a slurry that can be applied um, down to the root zone um, when you establish uh, a new plantation for example. Um, we, we tested um, this uh, organic uh, biochar-based uh, fertilizer made with cow urine and biochar uh, in lots of field trials uh, all over the country in Nepal. And as you can see here, uh, these uh, blue and uh, red bars are always showing the yield increase compared to the traditional practice with only compost. So this is urine, biochar and compost, whereas this only urine and compost. And um, the, um, the yield increase, the average yield increase is about 100% um, when we compare this uh, urine biochar to traditional compost, but also when we compare it um, to the use of chemical fertilizer. So that works for a lot of uh, different crops, including tree crops that uh, are part of, uh, part of this diagram. Um, and then you can see here on the left side for cinnamon, um, a 10 months trial showing that with this organic substrate uh, we improved um, the tree growth here um, expressed in stem diameter uh, by, by 200% and the plant height of a cardamom tree uh, by about 100%. So that is uh, now the method that we used also in Ratanpur uh, for the plantation of the trees. And uh, we applied about 2 liter of this um, charged biochar with some compost in uh, tree pits about 40 centimeters deep. And, and then the village united uh, and started to grow, um, to, to plant uh, these new forest gardens. Uh, so in the first year we start with uh, 10,000 mixed trees. As you can see here, mulberry on the right side, cinnamon on the left side. Um, this is the growth already after about nine months. Um, but um, as, as I said before, uh, with these local climate uh, change patterns, um, get during a dry, long dry season, uh, which is about six months uh, in winter, um, there's not enough water. Uh, to guarantee the survival of the planted trees. So the trees are planted usually in the, uh, in the wet season. And uh, then they start nice growing in the first two or three months, which is quite easy. And then the dry season starts and without watering, even with these organic substrates that we applied at the root zone, uh, trees start to suffer. So we had um, also to organize a water retention pits 
um, for the irrigation of the trees in the first uh, two to three seasons, uh, two to three years. And uh, we, we also provided uh, irrigation pipes um, so that the water that was uh, retained or distributed into these pits uh, can then be easily distributed uh, to the trees, which was a um, very happy moment for these farmers that for the first time have uh, irrigation facilities uh, on these fields um, for, uh, for many years. So, um, also was necessary not to buy uh, only these trees. So, in the first, first for the first um, campaign, we, we bought these trees, but then we, we established this tree nursery so that the farmers can make uh, their own trees and uh, also can sell some of them um, for some additional income. So how do we um, how do we now uh, link these carbon credits? So we we sell carbon credits um, for the moment uh, mainly uh, to uh, to the readers of the Itaca Journal, uh, but also to some companies at thirty five um, euro per ton of CO two, and now uh, we also established uh, what we call. Um, CO2 subscription, so you subscribe uh, with a monthly payment to become climate neutral, um, which costs for for German um, about um, uh, 40, um, uh, 30, 37, 38 uh, euro per month. Uh, and with this money, um, we pay the three saplings. Um, we pay for the plantation activities. We, we, it's, it's a lot of uh, day work, and uh, so if, if the people are engaged for that, then they cannot do other um, income generating work. So, so we have at least uh, to, to provide um, a bit of uh, compensation for that. Um, we paid for the water retention pits and the irrigation pipes. Uh, there's some fencing necessary uh, to protect uh, the trees, establishment of the tree nursery, and especially um, farmers they get a prime per tree as a carbon credit, but only if the tree survival um, of their campaign is more than 80% in the first three years. So we did a bit the error in the beginning to provide too many trees um, to the farmers and we reduced it in the second year to um, a maximum of 200 trees per family because uh, it's, uh, in a, especially in a dry season, a lot of uh, maintaining work to, um, um, for maintaining the pits and the irrigation and the mulching and then in the wet season for establishing drainage and if it's too much, then um, people uh, tend to not take care enough uh, for trees. But this 80% tree survival, which is, is quite quite big, uh, especially compared um, to government campaigns where 50% um, uh, tree survival is already a big success and uh, there are often campaigns uh, where tree survival is, uh, is less than 20%. So it's quite challenging. Um, but uh, this is uh, the farmers uh, understood and have to understand that, uh, in fact, they um, don't get um, donation money. Um, they sell a product. They sell uh, accumulated carbon. And... Um, so they only get uh, the money uh, when this tree survival is guaranteed and so uh, also the accumulation and sequestration of this carbon. Uh, so over these uh, uh, last two years, um, we have about 89 farmers uh, that planted a total of uh, 25,000 trees. And uh, on about 30% of, of this land, we also established uh, intercropping, annual intercropping. So you will see um, on some pictures later, like 
with uh, ginger or, or with beans um, and spices uh, that uh, grow very nicely uh, in the shade of these young trees and um, help to cover the soil, uh, creating also uh, mulching materials and fodder. So each tree was planted with about two liters of cow urine and hence biochar, um, which already makes up for about uh, uh, 50 cubic meter of biochar or, or 10 tons with an equivalent of 36 uh, tons of CO2. Um, but this um, we, we did not sell um, uh, as carbon credits. We we only sell um, the uh, CO2 that is in fact accumulated uh, in the planted trees so that we, we can show and we can calculate and we can measure and where we can assure that it's still there. And now we had 26 water retention pits and nearly 7 kilometers of irrigation pipes. So, uh, we're talking about this 80% um, of tree survival as a condition so that these farmers get, um, get this carbon credit money. But in fact, uh, when we uh, controlled um, the um, plantation campaign, we found that in the first year the survival rate was only about 57% in average. Um, we had uh, some farmers that had, uh, they were even below 40%. Most of the farmers had above 50%, 60 to 70%. But well, we had some uh, that achieved in these first years more than 90%, showing that in fact, uh, with, um, with uh, the adapted care, uh, this is absolutely possible to achieve. So what we had to do is to adapt our system uh, to improve the survival rate and the maintenance of, um, of this forest garden system. So we invited psychologists uh, to work with us and uh, to create um, a, a social model uh, which would improve the success and, and they, they suggested us uh, this type of triad system. Uh, which is very nice. So that means uh, there are three families, um, so essentially three women um, uh, from three houses uh, that has to work together. So, and they create a tree aid. And that means um, that only they have to, uh, they have to take care each also of the other's field. Um, so they have to control, they have to go around, they have to check if uh, the other two um, take care of the trees, that, uh, that mulching is provided, that they have enough water and that all works and if not they have to discuss uh, how to organize this work. Because in the end um, each of these three women only gets the money if all of the three others uh, achieved at least the 80% of the survival rate. Um, so, so we made the payment of each individual dependent on two others. Um, and so this is for the first year and that is also the basis for the scale up of our system. As you can see here that uh, each partner of this, um, of this tree aid uh, becomes, in fact, the coach of a new tree aid uh, It can be in, in the neighboring village, or the village is big in another village. So, um, in fact, every, uh, every house or every family uh, has to take care of two others and uh, become the coach of three others. So he's interconnected um, to uh, five uh, other families. Um, and if that continues from year to year, then uh, the system uh, can in fact grow exponentially, um, which we hope uh, finally to establish. It is, um, it is certainly um, not easy. I mean, um, uh, there, there are always, as you know, in villages, there, there are always problems between, between families and um, things uh, to be solved. But um, 
I mean, we are this global family, and uh, if we don't succeed in, in, in creating functional uh, local systems, uh, how, how can we achieve a global system that um, that avoids uh, climate change and ecosystem uh, degradation? So. Um, you will see now that, uh, in fact, at the end of the second year, thanks to the triad system, we achieved an average of 86% tree survival. So you can see here, like, it's group A with three parties, and they have 94, 97, 99% survival. And then uh, you find um, some others uh, that uh, are here, 81, 83, 80%. So they just succeeded in having average 81%, but you also have uh, some uh, where this triad, uh, in fact, didn't work uh, in the way that all three were above 80%, but um, like uh, here, uh, you have one uh, farmer that has only 76%, while the others have 89, 95%. So in fact, this triad failed. Even if they have an average of 87%, um, they failed because one of the three of them um, did not uh, succeed sufficiently, um, which is their fault. So, uh, with this system, we hope now um, to, um, to go uh, the next step uh, to uh, scale up to the next villages and hopefully... Um, going to more regions and finally uh, to several countries. So coming to the end, um, I want to show you uh, some images on how it looks after one year. So uh, the trees, uh, some of the trees are growing very quickly, like Palonia, they, they grow in, in one year, um, six meters. Um, some others, um, like cinnamon, uh, is growing like... 60 70 centimeters but um, uh, here you have a very nice example uh, of um, trees um, mixed trees um, you see some some are still smaller and, and others uh, here the banana is is, um, is, is uh, bigger um, which was planted uh, one year earlier and in uh, on the ground you have this uh, legume crop black lentil um, uh, that gives an additional income, but uh, also provides uh, to the soil uh, protection, um, water storage, and soil organic matter increase. So, so if you see here, this is another example um, with uh, Michaelia trees that are at the height about of uh, this farmer woman, and she is staying. Uh, in her ginger plantation that she established uh, in between the tree rows on this terrace. And you can see here uh, how it looks before. Oh, it's, it's very impressive uh, when we work in the tropics how, how quick uh, that can go if you do it right. Okay, so if, if you look to, to the system, like for one hectare, we have 500 mixed trees and we can... Um, Per year, uh, with these 500 uh, trees per hectare, uh, capture about 3.1 ton of carbon from in the woody biomass. And we have additional 3.5 tons from leaves. So while the woody biomass grows for the next 20 years and um, accumulates this carbon and will later be used uh, in the form of wood or of biochar, and both. Um, the leaves um, are used as mulching material and as animal feed and um, through the animal feed uh, it will become compost and go back to, to the land. Part of the leaves are also uh, charred. And then we have in um, an production of about 5.5 ton of carbon from this understory cropping. Um, and that makes a total carbon input into the system of about 11 tons uh, per car carbon per year. If we assume now that 30% of this total uh, carbon input 
is maintained via biochar and compost and uh, animal urine and mulching and the exudates of the plants um, in the soil. So creating a new soil organic matter, we have a theoretical soil organic matter increase of about 6 ton per hectare or uh, about 0.15% annual increase in humus or soil organic matter. Um, this is not included into our carbon credits for the moment um, because we have to prove this on the longer term that we really achieve soil organic matter increase. Uh, so for the moment this is uh, an additional benefit uh, to the system where we only calculate the carbon uh, captured in the trees and uh, the wood and in the roots uh, so we only calculate on this 3.1 ton of carbon but in fact we have uh, much more carbon maintained in the system so uh, this 25,000 trees sequester and in 10 years average um, 400 tons of um, CO2 uh, equivalent per year which is, uh, as we saw before, uh, compared to uh, the emission of persons, um, not extremely much. Uh, so it um, is about um, the emission of 34 German people. We need about 50 hectares for that. And this current offset value is about 40,000 US dollar. When we calculate with 35 um, a dollar per ton of CO2. Now, um, neither the 34 Germans nor the 14,000 US dollar sound really much. The thing is that without these 40,000 dollars we would not have been able to plant 25,000 forest garden trees nor establish the whole system because uh, these people would not have had um, the investment into any of that. So, in fact, what we do here is we, we can um, trigger the re-establishment of uh, these ecosystems uh, with this kind of seed money um, that is uh, paid for the first three years only. So, the trees continue to capture carbon, but the farmers, they get um, this type of seed money and support for, um, for irrigation and so on for the first three years because after three years the trees uh, start to produce fruits and nuts and medicine and essential oil and silk and, and all this type of products um, that, that we introduced and that provides for these 25,000 trees at least a crop value per year of 250,000 US dollars. So that is um, nearly 20 times the seed money in interest, you could say. So thanks to this carbon credit linkage to the global market, farmers in uh, these poor countries and villages uh, can establish new, very highly productive uh, agro-systems that create income and good paid work for the people to return to their village. And the soil organic matter increase, the increase in biodiversity, the erosion control and the water retention are in fact in the end added values that nobody paid for. So um, we linked uh, the carbon farming activities to the carbon market and do this as an example um, that we hope can multiply based on these um, excellent experiences. Um, so forest gardening on abandoned terraces links local biomass carbon accumulation to international carbon markets, reverse land degradation, improves food diversity and increases farmer income and hopefully we'll do that in many more countries uh, in the upcoming years. So thank you very much for your attention. You will find more information on our activities at uh, our website itakainstitute.org. Thank you very much.